Hey everyone, I wanted to talk about an interesting development. So, just to jump straight into the article, it says, Six Gulf states warn Netflix over content violating Islamic values. Gulf states did not identify the type of content, though Saudi Arabia state media condemned shows with gay characters. <laughs> I mean, I have to say it's really shocking that other countries have different value systems, but... I will save my thoughts until the end. So it says, A group of Persian Gulf states have threatened Netflix with legal action if it continues broadcasting content that contradicts Islam, while Saudi state media indicated that the offending material centred on shows depicting sexual minorities. A statement issued jointly by the Saudi media regulator and the six-member Gulf Corporation Council, headquartered in the Saudi capital, Riyadh, did not specifically identify material referring only to content that contradicts Islam and societal values. The platform was contacted to remove this content, including content directed to children, the statement said. I mean, does anyone remember there's, oh, what was it called? There was like a show, I think it was called Cuties, basically like a paedophile's wet dream depicting children in a completely sexualized manner. I like, I think it was like toddlers, as far as I'm aware. So, you know, it's really, you know, quite shocking that other cultures perhaps weren't as receptive as as people who watch Netflix were in the West, I guess. So, to continue on, regional authorities will follow up on the platform's compliance with the, the directives, and in the event that the infringing content continues to be broadcast, the necessary legal measures will be taken. The Gulf Cooperation Council includes Bahrain, Kuwait, Oman, Qatar and Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. There was no immediate reaction from Netflix. While the GCC did not specifically identify the content deemed offensive, one segment of the Saudi run state of the I'll start again. One segment on the Saudi state run Al Ikbaraya News channel deplored movies and series for children with scenes promoting homosexuality under a dramatic cover via Netflix. A lawyer said in an on-air interview that these were very unfortunate and painful clips for our children, grandchildren and the next generation. Which kind of takes me to... Oh, what was the show called? There is, I mean, there's, there's two shows that come to mind. So there's a show called Sex Education. And it's like, the, the one of the main characters, I think he's became the, the new Doctor Who and Kuti Gatwa, I want to say, or Gatma. I'm sorry, but I mean, you look at him and you don't see a depiction of like, of social conservatism or like of religious conservatism. He's he's someone that you can't imagine meshes very well with more constrained views of sexuality and gender. But again, this is totally shocking that other cultures have different value systems. Or even the the character, I forget his name, um the what's his name? Omari Douglas, maybe? He was in the show It's a Sin, which basically depicts um, a group of homosexual men living through the AIDS epidemic during the the 80s. And uh, again, in that, in that show, the character was kicked out of his own home. I think his family were based in maybe Nigeria. And his character was kicked out of the show. Like, And it's kind of ironically happened on a, a large global scale, or at least a regional scale. When it comes to Netflix, it's like you have to... That's what strikes me as fascinating you have to realize that other cultures don't have the same value systems other cultures promote just different ends and again i'll save it for for the end but whatever happens to the the concept of value pluralism so this is a very i'd say classically liberal idea I, i'd imagine stemming from Philosophers like John Stuart Mill, John Locke, that you do not, and it's a, a concept that the 
the theorist John Mearsheimer, who he's a, he's a kind of an expert in international relations, and he has a philosophy of um, international realism. So he basically says that at ground level, that liberal philosophies have to realise that there is no agreement between different societies and different cultures on first values or first principles. We do not agree on how to live our lives and we don't agree on how our state should be run. And yet, you find these increasingly globalist corporations, conglomerates, seemingly not realising this, or in very subtle ways they realise it. So like, um, businesses like Audi or BMW or the video game developer um, Bethesda Game Studios they'll have the, the rainbow LGBT flags for all of their regions in Europe and the West and so on but when it comes to the Middle East there's, there's nothing it's just crushingly silent it's painfully silent on the LGBT front and it's again you kind of have to realise that there are different value systems at play but again, I'll save that for the end. So, a separate segment also on Al Ekbaria showed clips from the animated show Jurassic World Camp Cretaceous in which two female characters kiss. Though the channel blurred their faces, the channel interviewed a self-described family and educational advisor who said offensive material was sneaking, sorry, was sneaking into our homes and that the country faced a censorship crisis. And again, that takes me back to, what was the film? It was in the Star Wars sequels, where there were like two female characters just randomly kissed at the end. It's like, it had nothing to do with the show. And it's like, very flagrantly a political statement. But again, that's probably very bigoted to even notice that. So it says... Gulf countries have repeatedly clashed with US film distributors over content related to sexual minorities, especially in films. The United Arab Emirates in June banned the Disney animated film Lightyear, which contained a lesbian kiss. The United Arab Emirates is considered one of the most liberal countries in the Gulf region, though films with adult content are routinely cut or edited. Saudi Arabia, which only opened cinemas in 2017, really, is that true? Asked Disney in April to cut LGBTQ references in a Marvel superhero film, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness. I have no idea what that even is. Disney did not comply and the film was not screened in the kingdom. In June, Saudi state media filmed officials seizing rainbow coloured toys and articles of clothing from shops in the capital as part of a crackdown on homosexuality, which is a potential capital offence in Saudi Arabia. Items targeted in the raids included rainbow coloured bows, skirts, hats, pencil cases, and most of them apparently manufactured for young children. I mean, I think you can recognise that two diametrically opposed things can be true at once. It's true that you probably... I don't think people become gay by looking at gay characters on television, and I don't think being gay should be clamped down on it's not this moral harm but at the other end of the scale you you have to identify that people live by different value systems you have to again what happened to, to value pluralism the idea that we have to live in harmony you may not like other people you may not agree with other people but you respect that they also have their own set of interests and it's just I mean, companies like Netflix and Amazon Prime, Disney, they clearly market all of their content, their films, TV shows, for a very Western, liberal audience. And it becomes kind of just nauseating. Again, when you're watching... How can I best describe this? If an artist wants to make art using LGBTQ themes and they feel that this is an organic product, that this makes sense within the story that they want to tell, again, even in a show like It's a Sin, it's a show about the AIDS epidemic, yeah, sure, you should have creative freedom to do that. But when you have shows or films like Star Wars, and it's very blatantly just trying to 
raise some sort of political support or it's trying to gain the favour or curry favour with a certain demographic in the audience, it's like, no, then your product is becoming quite blatantly political. And I do think people should have a right to, to not be lectured in the content that they watch. And it's interesting. So we're very quick to demonise, as we should, colonialism and imperialism. And yet we live in this world where there's this very subtle attempt to pass on Western, typically centre-left and left-leaning values onto other cultures, largely against their will. So in cases like this, sure, if a country kicks up a fuss, they'll cut out a character or a scene, but there's this attempt to kind of slip in through the back door these values that we hold dear without really considering the values of other countries. And if we do consider them, they're obviously bigoted and homophobic and racist. There's just no room for disagreement because if you disagree, you're just flagrantly immoral. Which takes me to the thinking of kind of John Meshimer. He He describes this so well that if we break down the liberal philosophy to its key axioms or principles, the first principle is that everyone has inalienable rights. We have all, all of these rights, these political and civil rights, and that one of them should be the right to the freedom of expression, the freedom to believe in different values, but when you have this idea that we all have these inalienable rights, it quickly becomes universalised. You think, well, everyone has these rights, so we have a moral warrant to try and protect these rights abroad, or to promote these rights, or these struggles abroad. And it, this is where we, we have the, the current kind of culture war and between the West and the Middle East and kind of China as well with their depictions or removing uh, John Boyega's character in the Star Wars and um, promotional promotional materials. And it's, again, much like the wars we've experienced in Iraq and Afghanistan, you can't, it's very difficult to socially engineer another country with a very different value system. You can't just thrust these values of left-leaning, progressive, liberal tenets onto another country without extreme resistance, you're almost certainly going to fail in your attempt to engineer a different political framework or perspective and for that perspective to become the kind of the dominant political culture in that country. What you find is just I find it just very interesting, just this ideological battle. We often think of the culture war in America, but it's so much larger than that. It's a really, it's a geopolitical kind of struggle. You even see that just in the kind of the, the Russia-Ukraine crisis and how the West overthrew Yanukovych in 2014. And we're, yeah... I think this this attempt on behalf of liberals to to spread their values through I, 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 I'd say an imperialistic style of subtly trying to engineer a different way of life in these countries will just lead to greater conflict because people they have ties to their own value systems, they have ties to their own nation and what they think it symbolises. So it's just going to be a, a complete shit show. But if you've liked this video, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel if you want to see more content like this. And if you can offer any support, um, if you can pledge any support to my Patreon, I'd greatly appreciate that. And I think either this video, so I should be doing a video on the incel movement, which I know is quite popular on this channel. So that may have already released by the time you see this, or if it hasn't, it's probably the next video. So again, thank you for your time. Take care. See you later.